11 and I'm having what feels like mild contractions that are consistent. So I guess 11 at 9 o'clock by the way, at, at, at night time. You just said 11 o'clock. Yeah, obviously it's night time I'm in bed. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm having like mild contraction like pains that are consistent, so I guess it's cramping, but it feels like a contraction. But basically I'm not allowed to eat after 12 o'clock. I'm only allowed a sip of water in the morning and it has to be before 6. And I have a timer to, oh my god, I'm literally having like a contraction right now. Hold on. She has an alarm set for 5.30 to take the pills to help with the softening of, softening of the uterus. It's basically to prep for the DNC. So then it, there's less likely for them to actually poke her organs. No. No, that doesn't... No, that's not less likely. They can still go through the other side. <laughs> no, it's so they can get through the cervix more easily basically these are the same tablets they give you to pass things naturally um yeah so we'll update you in the morning with the dnc process right now i'm gonna try and go to sleep i haven't taken anything for these cramps because i'm trying to avoid to if it's unnecessary Trying to write it out. You wrote it out last night. You went to sleep. Yeah. I mean, I had VO naturally, so this isn't too bad. It's just a little different. And it's longer too. Yeah, but VO's was like 24 hours. I mean, but this is like 48 hours. <laughs> yeah, but this hasn't been going on all day. It mainly ha like occurs at night. So, right before I go to bed. <laughs> yeah, that's a little update. So Tiana woke up at 5.30, took the two tablets, um, within about half an hour, 40 minutes, she already had the really strong contractions and cramping as well, is it? Yeah. Um, she's finding it pretty hard to stand normally a little bit because the pain can be pretty hard. She didn't expect it for, to, for it to work that fast. Yeah, I expected to go back to sleep. Hmm. But... But we got up at like 6.05-ish, so she's had a shower and everything else. I uh, wash my hair. <laughs> um, Theo's awake and he's just chilling in his own bed. So I just guess my biggest concern is like, same thing with Theo, is trying to get you in the car. <laughs> yeah, but with Theo, we get out of the bath. Oh, it's the alarm. You got it? There's that many alarms. <laughs> the face you're pulling. Because <laughs> I'm in a pain. A lot of pain. Like, it's just, they're coming at random too. And like, they're lasting at random times. It's like, really hard. I had a minor meltdown in the box before as well. I just like don't want to get dressed or move. Mm. Saying that the um metro puzzle I think that's what it's called. Tablets like they're pretty strong and you know like it would be pretty hard to do this at home, Tiana said before. 
Yeah, I don't know. It'd be really You'd, if you definitely did do it by yourself, because these are the tablets that you take for um, if you're trying to lay, like do it at home. Yeah, I think so. I'm pretty sure, but I think you might even have to take more. You would. I think it. I think they you take said, up to six they or something. Said this is a minor dose, <laughs> and I'm like, it feels like I'm in labour. And I gave birth naturally, so I felt everything. This is worse, so I would give birth any day. It's different because you're not giving birth to life, you know. The mentality is so Yeah, the mentality is like it's the most beautiful. The mentality. Anyway, so I'm going to try and get this one dressed. At least my hair's washed. And then might pack a couple of extra clothes, I think, still. Yeah, because they said that if you, there is a slight chance that you may need to stay overnight if something. If they think you need to, or yeah, if there's something if wrong. Do if you bleed too much. Yeah. But I mean, we literally are only 15, 20 minutes away, so it's not that. Mm. I said not to worry with packing, but I might grab something to spare anyway. Mm. We just arrived at the day clinic and I finished filling out my paperwork. Unfortunately, Isaac can't come in with me, which is like really scary. And I think it's to do with the whole pandemic stuff. Um, so I think we're gonna be departing from here. And I'm not gonna film inside because privacy reasons. Yeah, other people. And other people and yeah, but I will keep you guys updated afterwards because I'm sure if you've never been through this, you're probably wondering how it works. But I'm gonna head in now. You say, take me on a treasure hunt. you on how everything went still have these uh, things on my chest that I should probably take off but I'm not really sure <sighs> that was really hard to go through um, but basically to summarize you because yeah sorry I'm like really out of it because I'm on that many like drugs at the moment <sighs> like the anesthesia anesthetic anesthesia I can't remember what they call it and painkillers but basically the nurse gets you in she gets you in a robe you fill out a bunch of paperwork and you consent um you answer a bunch of questions 
then they get you into the operating no it's not even the operating table it's like the waiting table you lie on the bed they talk to you even more um ask if you have any questions i had a few um so the doctor answered them for me um before like i officially went in and they're putting the um cannula in my hand that's when i just lost it and it was hysterical because i think that's when it like hits you for me that's when it hit me the whole time i was not putting much thought into it but when they started to like get things going it hit me but the staff there was really amazing and accommodating and so once I had the cannula in and they took blood pressure, then we moved into the operating room and they put an oxygen mask and I was just like crying. I think I cried until I fell asleep or like went under. And apparently it was really quick, I don't remember, but I remember waking up in another room. And um Mommy, Yeah, be you want to sanitize your hands? No. You want to sanitize? Um, yeah, I'll put this on there. Um, and I wake up in another room and um, I just remember it being so drowsy and there was a clock right there and I remember going in and out and every time I'd look at the clock, 15 minutes would pass and this was probably over an hour and a half. And then once I fully started to wake up, I remember, I remember, no, when I was still drowsy, I remember saying, like, to the nurse, oh, they didn't poke my organs, because that was one of the scariest things that was on my mind. But then I, like, started to fully wake up, and when I fully woke up, that's when it hit me again. And I just broke down. And cried and cried and cried and the nurses they were just comforting me and wiping my tears away and just being really really empathetic which is what you need when you're going through something so hard <sighs> and then once I was like that little bit better I walked into I guess the discharge room where they get you to sit down and fill out more paperwork and um, they make you eat something and drink something and they take your blood pressure and then they take the cannula out when they think you are doing fine. They also call your person to pick you up because you're not allowed to drive and you're meant to have a support person with you for the next 24 hours. And I have to wear these lovely socks for 24 hours, which is meant to prevent blood clots. I mean, overall, it happened very fast. I don't really know how I feel right now. I think I just feel really out of it. And, like, Theo is with me, so I had that little bit of a distraction. But I'll update you guys later on how we're going with things. I just... I've had a cry, but I can't quite process what just happened. I got some... Sexy socks going on. These are to um, prevent blood clots. So we have to wear these until tomorrow. Oh, yep. <laughs> They're a bit, a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> um. <sighs> oh, I. The last date was, update was this morning, wasn't it? Um. Did you give one in the car? Yeah, you filmed it. Not. When you picked me up, because I was really out of it. I did When I was getting hungry, Jacks, didn't you do something? Oh, I did. I did. Okay, so I actually forgot I did a little update. Because I was just on way too many painkillers. That anesthetic, anesthesia? I, you say anesthetic, I say anesthesia. I don't know what it actually is. I think it's both. It's just <laughs> different. Different You'd use it in different okay. circumstances. The, like drug where they put you under to sleep it was still the gas. very yeah the gas it was still very like intense at that time we just had a little watch back oh my god <laughs> i feel like i've kind of 
waking up a bit, but we basically, I just got lunch, I didn't eat, um, because I ate at the clinic, but I came home and had a nap, I was just out of it, <laughs> apparently I was like, came in to check and he's like, did you poke me or something? And no, like, I just I checked if your chest was rising and falling and if I could hear you breathing, and I was like, okay, she's not stirring all, but she's still alive, that's okay. <laughs> Apparently I didn't even flinch <laughs> and normally I do so I had a nap. I, I must have needed it Like we've just taken it really slow the whole day about two hours ish. Yeah, I just feel Physically, I feel like I'm not capable of much um, but Yeah, it's hard. I think the the biggest thing is it's been emotionally really hard and there's been a lot of ups and downs and I think with grief they, it comes in all different types of forms and you just have to roll with it. Um, I was just been, <laughs> I've just been rem reminiscing about like the updates and this whole journey and just reflecting back on it and I guess trying to let it sink in a bit more but um, yeah, it's just a challenge. You're really distracting. <laughs> You're really distracting. <laughs> so, as for bleeding goes, it's like a moderate, a moderate period, like bleeding. The drugs have worn off, so I'm starting to get a bit of cramping back. They said you could bleed for one to two days, but up to seven days is normal. They do see that if your bleeding increases and is filling too many pads, go to hospital because you could hemorrhage, which is quite confronting. But I think by the looks of things, I think things are okay in that perspective. Um, when you say, when you say like your uh, that they say you're hemorrhage, isn't that you're already hemorrhaging and that's why you should go to the hospital if you're filling the pads? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're hemorrhaging. So the reason why you can hemorrhage, this is what the doctor told me, um, was when they did the DNC, they do it, it's called, like, they use a vacuum tool to, to basically do the process of removing everything. Um, they have to use it on the lightest settings so they don't damage your uterus and cause scarring on your uterus. Um, one thing that I was really scared of, which you had, they had to let you know all the risks, is there is a very slight possibility that they could poke your organs. <laughs> a little side note, when I woke up from theatre, I asked them <laughs> if my organs were still intact. <laughs> so I was just very scared. But they're all fine. Um, so yeah, they use a light vacuum to remove everything and um, that means there is the possibility that they might not get everything which is why you can hemorrhage because your body can be tricked into trying to dispel things and then the hemorrhage can form um, which means you would have to go back into hospital and possibly get a second DNC. Um, again they said only 2% of cases are like that out of 98%, so it is unlikely, but it's still really important to know the risks when you are making the decision to go um, and get this procedure done. And again, your doctor should go through all of these risks with you. Um, it did take me and Isaac a while to decide on whether to do it. I mean, Isaac wasn't there, but we had talked about it beforehand, so. And I feel like the procedure, from like talking to Tian, talking to different friends and stuff like that, procedures are different for each certain thing as well. And who knows if, if you're watching from another country, mm, it, it could be, be different, different too. Again. Yeah, and um, state to state, when I was talking to my friends, it sounded different from what they went through. So I guess you can't really, you can try and prepare yourself as much as you can, but yeah, just, it's a really hard process and I think taking it easy and not being so hard on yourself. For me, one of the biggest things is I felt very disappointed and defeated because 
I had planned and hoped to be able to do this naturally at home and you know with the results it just wasn't happening so when I had to decide on whether or not to do the DNC I just felt a little bit like a failure because it just felt like my body wasn't doing as what it was meant to quote unquote but I've come to terms with that and it's just I needed to be done and it just feels like I can have a little bit of closure now so I mean there's still a big journey ahead of us but that is our little update and just for anyone out there who's going for the same thing like my, my both of our love comes goes out to all of you people you know, it's no matter what, like, every situation is different. Not every miscarriage is the same at the same time. Don't let anyone make you think that you're not allowed to grieve. Even if a miscarriage happens early on, grieving affects everyone so differently. And you're allowed to feel like that. And men too, definitely. Yes, and it's so important that if you have a partner to make sure they're okay too because I feel like a lot of focus goes on the woman, but, you know, the partner or the dad or, you know, even if you have a woman partner or whatever relationship you're in, that person, that support person is going through the same emotions and they have to ride with you and it's important to check in with them as well. And obviously they're not going for the physical, but, you know, I feel... Just as much as what Tiana's feeling in a way, but just in different times as what she is. Yeah, we haven't been in sync at No, all. not at all. Like, I, she's been supporting me and then then I support her when I'm feeling good. Which I think is kind of helpful overall to <laughs> kind of balance each other out. But, yeah, it's been a roller coaster, And I think looking back on a lot of my li little update videos that I've done, it's like I seem okay, but, you know... That's just because I'm on camera and it's like I have this task, but it's not always like that. <laughs>